Welcome to the Region 5 Confidential Business Information Training. This training module is a mandatory yearly training requirement for all Region 5 employees and C grantees who handle CBI for all statutes other than TOSC and FIFRA. This training sets forth Region 5 specific measures to properly safeguard CBI pursuant to 40 CFR 2.211 and EPA's records policies. EPA Region 5 requires this training annually in order to access Clean Air Act, CERCLA, Clean Water Act, RCRA, and SDWA CBI. Please note that EPA's regulations allow an EPA employee to provide business information claimed or determined to be confidential to another EPA employee as long as the EPA employee requesting access to the information has an official need for the information. This training provides the Region 5 specific procedures to ensure that CBI is properly stored, transferred, and accessed. In this training, you will learn how to handle and protect CBI, as well as your CBI responsibilities. This training will satisfy your annual CBI certification requirements for all statutes, other than TOSC and FIFRA, which you will need to take separately. It's important to know that EPA treats all information claimed as CBI until a determination is made that the information is not CBI. And that includes any information that pertains to the interests of a business that is developed or acquired by that business that is received from any person, firm, partnership, association, or other public or private organization, legal entity, including a foreign state or local government, and could contain trade secrets or commercial or financial information that is privileged or confidential. The authorities that govern the safeguarding of CBI could emerge from the Trade Secrets Act, Environmental Statutes, Exemption 4 of the Freedom of Information Act, EPA regulations, or Executive Order 12600. Blueprints or maps, notes associated with new products, photographs, documents regarding patents, electronic recordings, written or oral communications. The origination of CBI is various. It can come from multiple sources, including mail, text or messaging platforms, email, can be produced as a result of an inspection, meetings, or long-term storage. Upon receipt of a CBI document, the custodian should take the document to their document control officer or document control assistant, DCO or DCA, to have it logged in and assigned a document control number or DCN. At that point, the custodian can store the document in a locked file cabinet or at their desk. As of 2018, the Microsoft 365 Office Suite, which includes Outlook, OneDrive, and SharePoint, among other modules, is designated as FISMA moderate status, as defined in FIPS Publication 199, Standards for Security Categorization of Federal Information and Information Systems. Although internal transmittals should be kept at a minimum and only used when essential, EPA's e email system is sufficiently secure for individuals to send, receive, and store CBI. Documents containing CBI should never be received or stored in group mailboxes. EPA receipts need to be logged and tracked by the region's DCOs and DCAs, and neither access nor chain of custody can be tracked in a group mailbox. If a custodian is externally transmitting CBI for agency business purposes via email, they should always ensure in advance that the recipient email address is encrypted. For example, if you must send email containing CBI to the Department of Justice, Use only their secured server, addressed to the DOJ attorney at enrid.doj.gov address, which is encrypted. Do not use the standard at usdoj.gov address, as it is not encrypted. CBI, which is stored in a computer, must be protected as carefully as hard copy material. The following are recommendations for safeguarding. Always store CBI in OneDrive or SharePoint with appropriate permissions. Do not store CBI on a local area network or on a hard drive. Do not use any removable storage media to maintain CBI. And do not leave files open in plain view and unattended. Any computer-based session should be terminated. Employees should use all due and reasonable caution when discussing CBI material. CBI should only be discussed with other individuals who are also authorized for access to CBI. The individual who initiates the discussion must advise the other parties that the communication includes CBI material or data so the other party or parties will treat it as such. The following are safeguarding recommendations. Telephone conversations are not secure. It is recommended that sensitive information not be discussed over the telephone unless absolutely essential. 
In telework scenarios, ensure that video conferencing software is agency sanctioned, for example, Microsoft Teams. Fax machines are not secure. Do not use unless absolutely essential. Do not speak openly about CBI in a cubicle. Voices can carry. For in-person discussions, use only a secure room. Remember, walls have ears. And in all communication scenarios, verify with DCO that attendees have authorized access. If you have custody of CBI, you are responsible for protecting this information from disclosure to people without authorized access. When you create or receive a document, you must identify any CBI in that document. When in doubt, you should contact CBI attorneys in the Office of Regional Counsel, ORC, or in the instance of FIFRA Tosca CBI, the Office of General Counsel, OGC. If you suspect an unauthorized release or potential violation of the CBI procedures, you must promptly report this to your supervisor, the DCO or DCA, and one of ORC's CBI contacts so that they can prepare an inadvertent release letter to be sent to the affected business. Managing CBI programs document tracking system, overseeing the receipt, storage, transfer, mailing, and use of CBI by employees, implementation of the divisional CBI program, granting employee access and maintaining the CBI database, concurring on clearance of employees leaving the agency, providing training materials and guidance on the appropriate CBI document handling procedures, and properly identifying CBI documents with a document control number or DCN. The Records Liaison Officer or RLO is responsible for the oversight of the Records Management Program, which includes employee training, program development, ongoing support, and regional guidance. CBI can be checked out from the DCO and DCA. When in your possession, CBI must be protected from view and locked up when you leave the workplace. Regional DCO and DCA maintains a SharePoint-based document tracking system for all statutes with the exception of FIFRA and TSCA. It should be noted, no matter how you receive CBI, whether it's paper, electronic documents, or emails, your DCO and DCA should be contacted to update the tracking system accordingly. CBI materials will be retained and stored in accordance with NARA-approved EPA records control schedules and agency directives. CBI portions removed from original records and placed in separate secured files as derivative CBI have the same retention as the records from which they came. This means as you prepare a record for disposition that is marked as containing confidential documents, those documents need to be retrieved and dispositioned in the same manner. Creating new documents using CBI, also known as derivative CBI. New documents created using existing CBI are not automatically CBI, but must be treated as such until determined otherwise. When in doubt, contact your ORC or OGC CBI attorneys. If the document is determined to be CBI, a copy must be provided to the DCO and DCA for a document control number or DCN. If copies of CBI are made, the original DCN must be included as well as a copy number. All copies must be logged with the DCO and DCA. Many EPA offices maintain CBI received from EPA contractors. To determine if the information is confidential, the EPA employees must first determine if the information is pre-award or post-award information received from contractors. Some information, for example, the overall contractor price, may be confidential before the contract is awarded, but not afterwards. Although handling information and pre-award bids and proposals are detailed in EPA's Contracts Management Manual, it does not provide specific guidelines for handling information received from a contractor after a contract has been awarded, such as detailed invoices. An example of sensitive information contained within invoices could be hourly contractor pay rates, which could be considered proprietary information. EPA's Class Determination 195, Confidentiality of Certain Business Information Submitted by Contractors and Prospective Contractors Issued by Headquarters OGC clearly identifies certain contractor information. Destroying CBI. CBI should always be destroyed in coordination with the DCO and DCA and in accordance with approved EPA records control schedules as well as National Archives and Records Administration legislative and EPA regulations. Destruction of CBI materials refers to all material containing CBI data, irrespective of any existing format. Copying of CBI should be done in confined quarters out of view of non-authorized individuals. All copies must be logged in with DCO and DCA. 
Copies should be numbered as a set of documents, for example, one of six, two of six, etc. Contractors must have CBI language written into their contractor and must be authorized to handle documents for copying. Traveling with CBI includes telework. Copies are preferred over originals. Require supervisory approval prior to travel. DCO and DCA must be notified. Content taken for travel must be kept with traveler at all times. It cannot be in checked baggage. Materials should not be viewed while in transit to minimize chances of unauthorized disclosure. DCO and DCA will double wrap materials if being transferred. The inner wrapping will identify the recipient to be labeled as an example, CAA confidential business information to be opened by addressee only. The outer wrapping will be labeled only with sender and recipient addresses. When traveling to another EPA facility, documents may be stored with destination DCO and DCA, even if no transfer is involved. Other methods of transporting CBI include hand delivery, which must be carried out by authorized personnel. The content must be protected at all times. Receipts must be signed at both ends of the journey. The CBI should be given to the DCO and DCA at the final destination, and the employee carrying CBI must follow procedures for traveling with CBI. If CBI is transported by courier. It should only be used when time is critical. The material should be transferred from DCO, DCA to DCO, DCA, and you must obtain written supervisory approval. CBI to non-EPA federal employees or other authorized agents of the U.S. government. This method of transfer, the DCO DCA prepares and mails all CBI. The DCO and DCA must confirm that the recipient is authorized to have access to CBI and updates the disclosure log. If approved, the outside agent may review originals within an EPA facility or receive copies in accordance with CBI transfer procedures. CBI for contractors. Contracts between EPA and a contractor must stipulate that CBI is used only to perform work required by the contract. Disclosure outside EPA is forbidden unless approved in writing by the submitter of the CBI or an EPA legal office. EPA program office managing the contract must prepare and maintain a record of each disclosure to the contractor. This record of disclosure must be kept by the program office for at least 36 months after the date of disclosure. And all copies of CBI must be returned upon EPA's request when CBI is no longer needed to perform the contract work or when the contract is completed. The contractor completes the annual CBI training and is placed on the access control list. The contractor must sign a non-disclosure agreement incorporating the contract provisions prior to access and acknowledge provisions concerning the use and disclosure of CBI as beneficial and enforceable to EPA and the CBI originator. Automatic revocation Contractor CBI access will occur when the contract expires. If a company is requesting a copy of its own submitted CBI, the request must be submitted to the appropriate DCO DCA on the company's letterhead, signed by a designated corporate official and indicating the authorized recipient. CBI must be sent in accordance with the CBI transfer procedures, and as a reminder, with isolated exceptions, the DCO and DCA prepares and mails all CBI to industry. This transfer requires a written request from the Speaker of the House, the President of the Senate, a Chairman of a Committee, or the Comptroller General. The request recipient's immediate supervisor and the Office of Congressional Relations must be notified immediately. If one is not already assigned, an ORC attorney should be requested to help prepare the documents for disclosure. Unless otherwise requested, each affected business must be notified and CBI must be sent in accordance with CBI transfer protocols. Clean Air Act, CERCLA, Clean Water Act, Safe Drinking Water Act, and RUCRA allow disclosure to EPA representatives concerning state and local governments. Program Office coordinates with ORC or OGC on the sharing of CBI with states and local governments under the following conditions. It has duties under the statute or implementing regs, has written opinion from Chief Legal Officer or Counsel that the information can be compelled, or ORC or OGC has determined that the state or local government can adequately protect the info. Finally, EPA can enter into confidentiality agreements with states and other federal agencies subject to, find, to the findings made by OGC.
CBI to those allowed access by submitter's consent. EPA may disclose CBI to any person with the submitter's prior written consent. Disclosure by consent does not waive the submitter's CBI claim with respect to others for whom the submitter has not given consent. Examples include Congress or the Comptroller General, or the public, pursuant to rulemaking, adjudication, or licensing proceeding conducted under the respective statutes. Additional CBI considerations. In response to statutory requirements, business owners, corporations, and private individuals submit business information to EPA. When EPA obtains this information, an initial determination may need to be made as to whether the information is entitled to confidential treatment. This need usually arises if a FOIA request is received or anticipated. CBI is still a federal record and documents the basis for decisions. It is archived under the appropriate record schedule, it is recalled through the DCO or DCA, and is sent back to the company only if a part of a settlement or under special circumstances. If a response to a FOIA request contains CBI, the FOIA coordinator will notify the requester of the CBI in the response letter, explain EPA's procedure for requesting approval from the originator, and send a letter of request for approval from the originator of the CBI, if determined to be releasable. If a CBI determination is required under 40 CFR 2.204A1, the program office will send substantiation requests to the affected companies and the FOIA coordinator will send an initial denier to the requester. Audits are conducted annually, and they are conducted by the CBI DCO and witnessed by a DCA. The audit identifies all CBI material for which your division is accountable. In such instances, upon discovery, you must notify the DCO and your supervisor of missing CBI or inadvertent release. ORC CBI attorney will notify the affected business, informing them of inadvertent release or misplaced document. ORC will send a letter to the recipient of the CBI asking for the return of the material. If the CBI is inadvertently released to an attorney, there is a potential for disciplinary action if it is not returned. A willful violation can result in criminal prosecution, dismissal, suspension, fine, or other adverse personnel action. The following list is statutory references for CBI. We've come to the end of the annual CBI training for Region 5 for all statutes other than TSCA and FIFRA. Thank you for attending. Uh, your most important responsibility is to take the annual certification. Remember that your continued access to CBI due to your job responsibilities is contingent upon being recertified annually. The DCO will send out notification of your annual requirement to be CBI certified prior to the expiration of your current authorization.